Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to give you a quick unboxing and overview of this Netgear switch. This is a, a smart managed switch with a user interface that you can set up. Virtual LANs, segmentation, um, traffic prioritization, etc. As it says on the box here. This is model JGS524E and it's a 24 port, uh, 1 gigabit per port switch. This is actually a replacement for uh, the same model but non-smart that I've been previously running. So as you can see this is a JGS524, it's a version 2. And uh, this is a non-smart switch, just a standard network switch. Uh, this has been in my rack at home here on my home network for a while. And uh, I just now need the ability to segment things with VLANs and stuff. So I went for this. Um, Plus this switch is a bit temperamental sometimes. Uh, it's been really reliable though, which is why I want my Netgear again. This is the box that the switch comes in. This is off uh, Amazon that I purchased this one from. It came in at around about £100 uh, UK. We can see here the contents. It's got the smart switch. This is a V2 as well. We've got the rack mount kit, which are the ears that were attached to mine you could just see. Uh, power card and a quick install guide. There's the physical dimensions for it, the weight, and that it has a lifetime hardware warranty. So, on this side, system requirements category 5e or better Ethernet cable, network card for each PC, uh, and Windows 7 XP or Vista for running configuration utility. Um, I probably wouldn't even install the utility, I'd probably access it from a browser, but anyway. So, these are the standards it supports. Uh, basically, it's going to work with everything and we got anywhere from 100 to 240 volts so it's the switch mode power supply and it makes it usable in any country operating temperature humidity and safety markings around the back it's just got a bit of a uh, comparison between all the different models of switches so you can see uh, here is the 524 the one i just shown you the blue one and this is the 524e so you can see this has got all of these additional features that you don't get on a standard switch. You can also get PoE versions which allows you to power devices through the Ethernet ports uh, which this model doesn't have because I don't require that. There's a quick uh, example of wiring up the switch. Anyway let's take a look at the actual switch itself in the box. Just uh, cut this seal. Should have really had something to hand other than a screw to cut that but oh well. In the box, we've got the instruction manual, first thing. Then as well, we've got these cardboard packing, which is nice. Instead of using um, polystyrene um, spongy foam stuff that you can't recycle, it's all recyclable packaging. So there's the switch itself. We'll uh, take this out of the bag really quick. And there's a closer look at the switch. You've got a factory default reset button there. You've got all the LEDs for link activity and indication of what speed that the device is linked at. There's all of your ports in two groups. Looking down the side, you can see the power supply on this side here. Looks like the power supply. Yep. But the power input's over there. Yeah, it appears that the power supply's on the other end and there's like a pass through cable. Uh, nice big vents. No fans, which was nice. I uh, specifically didn't want one with fans in it because this actually lives in my bedroom along with my servers. So it's all pretty much silent. The actual rack is just behind me right now. And you can't really hear it. You can probably hear the birds outside more than anything. There's these four screws on each side as well to mount the rack ears, which I'll show you put it on now. In the accessory box. Oh, it's a sleeve actually. There we go. So it's just a cardboard sleeve again. There's two power cables included with it. So you get a European type one. And you get a UK one. I'm not going to be using either of these because the uh, unit of mine gets connected to a UPS backup unit. So I just have a male to female 
uh, of these connections. There's also this bag here that's got the rack mount hardware in. Now, even if you're not mounting your switch in a rack cabinet, uh, I would advise that you do put the ears on it because otherwise it is very easy to lose them. Uh, mine will be going being mounted in a cabinet. Let's just uh, have a quick size comparison as well here between the two. They are pretty much the same width. The depth is the same as well. The only difference is the positioning of the ports on the front, which is quite nice. Uh, so the ears off this unit are probably even fit on there, but yeah, I would uh, advise you screw these onto your unit anyway, because otherwise they end up going missing, then you can never find them, and uh, yeah, you get uh, rubber feet as well included, sticky back. This bag of screws here includes a selection of hardware. So let's uh, tip this out and I'll have a look at what we've got here. Okay, so there's a few uh, quite big long screws here. These look uh, like rack screws to me. There's two different varieties of them. So you've got four of what looks like possibly an M5 thread. And then there's also four what looks like the M6 uh, type ones are larger screws so that's eight of those, four of each type depending on the cabinet you put it in, it's quite nice to include them uh, you get four plastic uh, washers those are to put under the screws when you're attaching it to a cabinet to stop it marking all the casing which you can see uh, this has had on previously so there's not really any marks there, you can just see a little bit of a ring and then you also get two, four, six, eight of these small block screws, which are the ones you use to attach these ears to the uh, switch. So I'm going to go, go ahead and screw these ears on now. The rack ears with this one are black, despite the casing is grey. Not that it really matters. There we go. So those rack ears are now installed. I've just screwed them in. And uh, that's the unit with the ears fitted. So I suppose I may as well drop this into my rack and connect it up. And uh, show you all the lights flashing away on it. Because there's not much else I can really demonstrate in this video. And this is mainly just a quick unboxing and overview of the unit. So I'll probably do a more in-depth video uh, at a later date on my channel. When it comes to setting this thing up along with an overview of my home network. Okay, so before I stick this in the rack, I figured I'd just show you what it does when I plug it in. So, when powered on, you get the power light, all the LEDs come on, then they go off, just the power LED stays on. So there you go. So this is the network rack at the moment. Uh, it's in a bit of a state because obviously I've taken the other switch out, so I've just temporarily got this Unify uh, 8 port switch here that's doing VLAN related stuff. Then I've got this 16 port generic Netgear standard switch here that's just got the rest of everything else plugged into it or what is actually set up at the moment. So yeah, I'm going to uh, drop the new switch into here really quickly and uh, then I'll also have to tidy this up and that but that'll probably be a future video. Okay, so the switch is now in. It's a bit of a mess honestly. Um, I do need to change these cables out for shorter runs and such to make things a bit neater and move things around. I actually need a bigger um, rack case really to uh, house all of this hardware in and I've got some additional stuff to put in and an extra server but that'll have to wait at the moment. But uh, yeah it's uh, functional. You can see all the LEDs there are flickering away. The orange LEDs indicate the 100 megabit links of which there's only two of on this. Uh, hole switch the rest is all gigabit so yeah I've also got to finish patching in some uh, hardwired runs into here so there's a lot more to do but that's going to be coming in future videos so that's pretty much it for this video if you found it interesting or helpful please leave a like down below any questions feedback or comments leave them down in the comments section get subscribed to my channel for random future technology videos just like this one thanks for watching